Hello and welcome back to the Immortal News family. In today's heartfelt video, we bring to you the latest updates on the passing of some truly remarkable individuals within the last 24 hours. As a part of the Immortal News family, we are committed to honoring and remembering those who have made a lasting impact in our lives and the world. If this video touches your heart, or if the stories of these extraordinary people have moved you, please show your respect and remembrance by giving this video a thumbs up. Thank you for joining us in this moment of reflection and tribute. Number 9. A revered figure in entertainment, Selva Aleman is celebrated for her profound impact on theater, film, and television. Renowned for her versatility and passion, she graced the stage and screen for over six decades, earning numerous accolades, including multiple Martin Fierro Awards, the prestigious Konex Platinum Award, and the Ace Gold Award. Her career is marked by groundbreaking roles in both classic and contemporary works, embodying the spirit and resilience of her craft. Born as Selva Carmen Giorno on April 30, 1944 in Buenos Aires, Selva took her stage name from her stepfather, musician Oscar Aleman. She began her artistic journey in the 1960s, quickly establishing herself with roles in youth stories and films like Pepper and Selena's Cry. Her television presence was significant with standout performances in popular series such as La Lola, The Malicious, and Final Time. In theater, she captivated audiences in productions like Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf? and Love Letters. Beyond her artistic achievements, Selva was known for her dedication to the craft and her commitment to supporting fellow actors. She was actively involved in initiatives to benefit the House of Theater and participated in read-along theater performances contributing to the cultural enrichment of her community. Her marriage to actor Arturo Puig spanned many years, marked by shared creative projects and mutual admiration. Selva Aleman passed away at the age of 80 in Buenos Aires. Her sudden death, confirmed as a heart attack, left a void in the hearts of many. Her passing was mourned by the Actors Association and countless fans who cherished her performances and her generous spirit. Selva Aleman's legacy is defined by her everlasting contributions to the arts, her passion for storytelling, and her unwavering commitment to her craft, which continue to inspire new generations. Tributes to Selva Aleman. Number 8. A rising star in the world of bodybuilding, Matthias Pavlak became a symbol of determination and transformation. He earned recognition for his remarkable journey, overcoming obesity as a teenager and dedicating himself to the sport with passion and resilience. In 2023, he won the U23 contest, achieving the title of Mr. Blumenau and regularly competed in regional bodybuilding contests in southern Brazil, showcasing his achievements on social media. Born on April 15, 2005 in Brazil, Matthias Pavlak's path to bodybuilding began in 2019, motivated by a desire to change his life. With guidance from his first coach Lucas Chigatti, he quickly made his mark in the bodybuilding community, placing in several competitions and gaining admiration for his commitment. Matthias often shared his story online inspiring others with his belief that, no matter how difficult or impossible your dream is, if you really want it, you will get there. Outside of competitions, Matthias was known for his positive spirit and strong friendships within the fitness community. His former coach, Chigatti, expressed pride in watching Matthias grow into a respected athlete and a friend who felt like a son. Fellow trainers and competitors frequently praised his drive and kindness, which left a lasting impression on everyone who knew him. Tragically, at just 19 years old, Matthias was found at his home in Blumenau after suffering an apparent heart attack. His sudden passing has deeply affected the bodybuilding community, where he was viewed as a beacon of hope and inspiration for others striving to change their lives. The legacy of Matthias Pavlak lives on in the hearts of those he inspired and competed with, reminding all that even the most challenging dreams are within reach. Tributes to Matthias Pavlak
Number seven. To publish it upon my death. So if you're watching me, I'm dead. Known for his deep knowledge and unique approach, Paul Harrell was a beloved figure in the world of YouTube, where he built a community of over 1.13 million subscribers. As a firearms expert and educator, he offered viewers comprehensive lessons on gun safety, ammunition, and shooting techniques, earning him a reputation as one of the most respected voices in his field. Born on November 5, 1965 in Oregon, Paul dedicated much of his life to sharing his passion for firearms through engaging and informative content. His channel, characterized by its straightforward and accessible style, became a trusted source for gun owners and enthusiasts worldwide. Beyond technical expertise, Paul was admired for his humility, humor, and integrity, qualities that shone brightly in every video he produced. In December 2023, Paul recorded a heartfelt message to his followers, bravely sharing his diagnosis of stage 2 pancreatic cancer. Despite initially believing it was caught early, his health declined rapidly. Tragically, he passed away at the age of 58. His death left a significant void in the community he had built, as fans from all over the globe expressed their sorrow and gratitude for the knowledge and wisdom he imparted. His brother and team planned to continue Paul's legacy, keeping the channel active to honor his memory. In his final message, Paul expressed sincere apologies to his followers for his sudden passing, showing his characteristic concern for others even in his last days. His editor, Brad Nelson, described him as a generous, kind friend who shared the best campfire stories. Paul Harrell's contributions to firearm education and his unwavering dedication to his audience will continue to resonate. His teachings and legacy will inspire countless individuals to learn responsibly and safely. Tributes to Paul Harrell. Number six. Out of Earlwood, Sydney would like to nominate Talking Pictures compare Geraldine Mellet as the thinking person's pinup. Renowned for his contributions to broadcasting, literature, and oral history, Tim Bowden was a respected figure who left an everlasting mark on his field. With a career spanning several decades, he was celebrated as a gifted storyteller, documentary producer, and author. Bowden hosted the popular Backchat on the Australian Broadcasting Corporation, ABC from 1986 to 1994, produced the acclaimed This Day Tonight series in the 1970s, and founded the ABC's Social History Unit. His work, including the powerful series Prisoners of War, Australians Under Nippon, and Time Belong Masta, the Australian involvement with Papua New Guinea, has been recognized for its depth and historical significance. Born Timothy Gibson Bowden on August 2, 1937 in Hobart, Tasmania, he studied at the University of Tasmania, earning a Bachelor of Arts. His career in media began at ABC, where he quickly rose to prominence as an insightful and dedicated broadcaster. He continued to innovate throughout his career, producing influential documentaries on Australian Antarctic research in the 1990s. Tim authored numerous books, such as Changi Photographer, One Crowded Hour, and The Silence Calling, Australians in Antarctica 1947-97 showcasing his commitment to capturing and preserving history. His works reflect his keen eye for storytelling and an unwavering dedication to understanding the human experience. Honored with a member of the Order of Australia in 1994 and a Centenary Medal in 2001, Tim's accolades reflected his significant impact on broadcasting and historical documentation. He was also awarded an Honorary Doctorate of Letters from the University of Tasmania in 1997 for his services to literature and history. Tim Bowden passed away at the age of 87. His passing is a profound loss to the field of broadcasting and to those who cherished his voice and stories. His legacy will continue to inspire future generations of journalists, historians, and storytellers. Tributes to Tim Bowden. Number 5. Wayne Graham was a legendary figure in the world of baseball, celebrated for his incredible achievements as a head coach and his remarkable influence on the sport. 
leading the Rice Owls to their first ever College World Series championship in 2003, Graham established himself as one of the most accomplished coaches in collegiate baseball history. His leadership brought five NJCAA World Series championships to San Jacinto College, and he was honored as the junior college coach of the century by collegiate baseball. Wayne Leon Graham was born on April 6, 1936, in Yoakum, Texas. Raised in Houston, he began his baseball journey at Reagan High School and later played for the University of Texas. Graham's professional career included time with the Philadelphia Phillies and New York Mets. After retiring as a player, he transitioned to coaching, where his impact was truly profound. At San Jacinto College, Graham's teams dominated, winning five national championships in six years. He was later named head coach at Rice University in 1992, where he transformed a struggling program into a national powerhouse. Under his guidance, the Owls made 23 consecutive NCAA tournament appearances and won 20 consecutive conference titles. Graham's development of talent was unparalleled, producing numerous first-round Major League Baseball draft picks, including Lance Berkman, Philip Humber, and Anthony Rendon. Beyond his on-field achievements, Graham was instrumental in the construction of Rice's Reckling Park, enhancing the university's baseball facilities. Known for his wit and tenacity, he always pushed his teams to strive for excellence, once stating after winning the 2003 championship, we want to do it again. Wayne Graham passed away at the age of 88, leaving behind a legacy of excellence, determination, and a love for the game that will continue to inspire future generations of players and coaches. Tributes to Wayne Graham. Number 4. Known for her remarkable contributions as a member of the House of Lords and as the head of Clan Fraser, Flora Fraser was a distinguished figure in British society. She made history as the only holder of a Lordship of Parliament with a seat as an elected hereditary peeress until her retirement in 2014. Her dedication to public service, respect for tradition, and commitment to decorum left an everlasting mark on the House of Lords. Flora Marjorie Fraser, born on October 18, 1930 in Edinburgh, was the daughter of Alexander Fraser, Master of Saltoon, and Dorothy Geraldine Welby. Raised at Cairnbog Castle, which her father repurchased for the Fraser family in 1934, she was educated at Heathfield School, Ascot and St. Mary's School, Wantage. After her brother's untimely death in 1944, Flora became the heiress presumptive, eventually succeeding her father as the 21st Lady Saltoon in 1979. In the House of Lords, she served on various committees and was a passionate advocate for issues such as the common fisheries policy and same-gender marriage, while upholding the traditions of the institution. Flora was also recognized as the chief of the name and arms of Clan Fraser, the head of the Scottish Lowland family, the Frasers of Philorth. Her leadership extended to her opposition against the removal of hereditary peers during the 1999 House of Lords Act, where she was among the 90 elected to remain. Flora's marriage to Alexander Ramsay of Mar in 1956, with whom she had three daughters, connected her to the British royal family and extended European royal circles. A fixture at royal events, she was admired for her grace and poise. Flora Fraser passed away peacefully at her home in Balater at the age of 93. Her passing marks the end of an era, but her legacy as a dedicated public servant and guardian of her family's heritage continues to inspire. Tributes to Flora Fraser Number 3. Renowned for his contributions to the black metal genre, Peter Kubik was a founding member and guitarist of the Austrian band Abigor. Known for his technical prowess and creative vision, Kubik helped shape the sound and identity of the band, which became one of the most respected names in the second wave of black metal. Throughout his career, he was celebrated for his innovative approach, particularly on albums like Night Hymns and Taphonomia Eternitatis which solidified Abigor's place in metal history. Born on March 3, 1975 in Austria, Peter Kubik co-founded Abigor in 1993 alongside Thomas Tannenberger. 
His musical journey began with the release of the band's debut album Devastation Invoke the Dark Age in 1994, which quickly became a defining work in black metal. Over three decades, Kubik remained the band's core member, driving its evolution from its raw early days to more experimental and progressive sounds, earning acclaim for each successive release. Beyond music, Kubik was known for his deep passion for the genre and his unwavering commitment to his craft. His influence extended far beyond Abigor, inspiring countless musicians and fans in the black metal community. Kubik passed away at the age of 49. His passing was announced by the band, who described his departure as walking through the gate by his own hand, through his own will. His legacy continues to resonate, both through his work with Abigor and his impact on the broader music landscape. Tributes to Peter Kubik. Number two, known for shaping the music of the former Yugoslavia, Borisov Bora Djordjevic left an everlasting mark as the frontman of the iconic rock band Riblia Korba. His powerful lyrics and distinctive voice created anthems like Look Homeward, Angel, and Doll on the front cover, resonating deeply with generations across the Balkans. Djordjevic's influence extended beyond his own performances. He wrote music and lyrics for celebrated artists such as Zdravko Kolik, Bijelo Dugme, and Dara Bubamara, making him one of the most influential figures in Balkan rock music. Born on November 1, 1951 in Kakak, Serbia, Djordjevic began his musical journey as a student, forming his first acoustic band, Zajedno, in 1972. His passion led to the creation of Riblia Korba in the late 1970s, a band that would define his career and the rock music scene in the region. Throughout his career, Djordjevic explored various musical styles, collaborating with artists like Arsen Dedic, Zoran Preden, and Rambo Amadeus, and contributing to film soundtracks and literature with over 10 published books. In addition to his artistic endeavors, Djordjevic was known for his engagement in cultural and political spheres. He served briefly as an advisor to Serbia's Minister of Culture in 2004 and was recognized by the Serb nationalist Chetnik movement in 2012. Borisov Djordjevic passed away in Slovenia at the age of 72. His music continues to inspire and reflect the complexities of the Balkan spirit, ensuring that his legacy endures in the hearts of many. Tributes to Borisov Djordjevic. What's Trending on the Internet? News 1. An eight-year-old boy from Utah has tragically passed away after accidentally shooting himself with a gun found in his mother's car. The incident occurred on Monday evening in the parking lot of a Maverick gas station in Lehigh, a city about 30 miles south of Salt Lake City. While his mother was inside a convenience store, the boy was left unattended in the vehicle, where he discovered the firearm under a seat. Authorities responded quickly and the child was rushed to a local hospital in critical condition before being airlifted to another facility. Sadly, he succumbed to his injuries on Tuesday morning. Police described the shooting as unintentional and self-inflicted, emphasizing that no charges have been filed against the mother. This tragic event comes just weeks after a similar incident in Utah, where a five-year-old boy died after finding a handgun in his parents' bedroom. In light of these heartbreaking losses, the Wilson and Hunsaker families have urged others to take extra precautions with firearms, hoping their experiences serve as a sobering reminder of the importance of gun safety. Utah currently has no laws penalizing adults for not securing unattended firearms, according to the Giffords Law Center to Prevent Gun Violence. News 2. A tragic accident claimed the life of 19-year-old Cutter Anderson Baird, a soldier stationed at Fort Moore, after a jump from a bridge in Georgia went terribly wrong on Labor Day. The incident occurred on September 2nd, when Baird and a fellow soldier decided to leap from the Dillingham Street Bridge in Columbus, which stands around 100 feet above the Chattahoochee River. According to Muscogee County Coroner Buddy Bryan, Baird hit the water chest first, causing severe blunt force trauma. 
Although he managed to get out of the river, he collapsed shortly after due to a lack of oxygen. He was rushed to a hospital but unfortunately, did not survive. Coroner Brian emphasized that the incident was purely accidental, not an attempt to take his own life. Let's just keep this family and friends in our prayers, he urged, warning others about the dangers of such stunts. Baird was also the vice president of Rockaroo's Animal Sanctuary, where his passion for animal care was unmatched. The sanctuary paid tribute, stating, his heart and love for animals cannot be matched, but we will live every day in his honor. A memorial service for Baird will be held on Saturday, September 7th in Goldthwaite, Texas. News 3. A Florida widow is seeking justice after a tragic surgical mistake led to her husband's death. William Bill Bryan, 70, passed away on August 21st after a doctor at Ascension Sacred Heart in Santa Rosa Beach allegedly removed the wrong organ during surgery. According to his wife Beverly, a retired nurse, Bill was admitted to the hospital with pain in his left shoulder, neck, and side. Doctors diagnosed a spleen issue and insisted on surgery. However, Beverly claims the surgeon mistakenly removed Bill's liver instead of his spleen. Everyone knows you can't live without your liver, she stated, describing the loss as exceptionally unnecessary and brutal. The family's attorney, Joe Zarzar, revealed the doctor had been involved in a similar case in 2023. The surgeon has since been removed from several medical office websites, including North Walton Doctors Hospital and Ascension Sacred Heart. The Walton County Sheriff's Office and State Attorney's Office are investigating to determine if criminal charges are warranted. In the meantime, Beverly is starting the process for a potential medical malpractice lawsuit stating, we do not want this to happen to anyone else. News 4. A tragic accident has claimed the life of 44-year-old Eileen Thornton from Brochane, Northern Ireland. The incident occurred around 8.05 p.m. on Tuesday evening along the Cushendall Road near Ballymena. Thornton, who was driving a black Peugeot, was involved in a single vehicle collision and was rushed to the hospital, where she sadly passed away shortly afterward. Inspector Cherith Adair of the Police Service of Northern Ireland, Senai, expressed condolences, stating, Our thoughts are with her family at this difficult time. The PSNI has also issued an appeal for anyone who may have witnessed the accident or has dashcam footage from the area to come forward to assist with their investigation. The Cushendall Road remains a busy route, and police hope that witnesses might provide crucial information to understand the circumstances surrounding this unfortunate event. Community members are encouraged to support the ongoing inquiry to help bring clarity to Ms. Thornton's grieving family. In this challenging time, the community's thoughts are with Eileen Thornton's loved ones as they navigate their loss. The PSNI continues to prioritize safety and offers its full support to all those affected. News 5. Brian May, legendary guitarist of Queen, has opened up about a recent health scare, revealing he suffered a minor stroke just a week ago. Speaking in a video shared on his YouTube and Instagram on September 4th, the 77-year-old musician explained that the stroke suddenly affected his left arm, causing him to temporarily lose control. It was a little scary, May admitted, but reassured fans with a smile. The good news is that I can play guitar again. May praised the staff at Frimley Hospital in Surrey, England for their fantastic care. Joking about his exciting ambulance ride with blue lights flashing, he shared that he's currently taking it easy, following medical advice to avoid raising his heart rate and staying grounded at home. Despite the scare, he remains positive and focused on his recovery, emphasizing that he doesn't want sympathy from fans, just support. This isn't May's first health challenge. He previously endured a heart attack in 2020 and had eye surgery in 2021. Yet through every hurdle, May's resilience shines. He continues to inspire fans with his unwavering spirit, proving once again that the show indeed must go on. News 6. Freddie Jackson, the beloved R&B singer known for hits like You Are My Lady and Have You Ever Loved Somebody, has revealed that he's been diagnosed with kidney disease. In heartfelt videos shared on his social media on September 4th, the 67-year-old artist opened up about his journey, stating, This has had its challenges, but I've decided to face it with openness and resilience. Jackson, who rose to fame in the 1980s with chart-topping singles, announced that he is partnering with the National Kidney Foundation to raise awareness about kidney health and support those affected by the disease. I want to share this part of my personal story to make a positive difference, he said. With a message of hope, Jackson expressed his gratitude to his fans, saying, Your love and support mean more to me than I can express. He emphasized that his advocacy aims to promote greater understanding and better outcomes for everyone living with kidney disease. According to the Mayo Clinic, kidney disease involves a gradual loss of function, 
and can lead to severe complications if left untreated, Jackson remains committed to raising awareness and hopes his journey will inspire others to prioritize their health. Number 1. A pioneering force in the world of comics, Bernie Miro was celebrated for his unique style and contributions to both mainstream and underground comics. Best known for his creator-owned series The Jam, Miro was a significant figure in the modern age of comic books, blending the fantastical with everyday life in a way that influenced future generations of artists. Born in 1961 in Marville, France, Miro moved to Canada in 1963 and grew up in Rodin, Quebec. He became a vibrant part of the Montreal underground comic scene, contributing to local zines while also working as an artist and colorist in the mainstream comics industry. His works include Mackenzie Queen, Dr. Robot, and contributions to Grendel, where his coloring talent was showcased in several story arcs. Miro collaborated with notable creators such as Mike Allred and Sal Good Sam, helping to shape the visual language of comics. In addition to his comics work, Miro was a musician, writing songs for his part-time band, Bug-Eyed Monster. He was recognized for his contributions to the art form with his induction into the Canadian Comic Book Creator Hall of Fame in 2020. Bernie Moreau passed away at the age of 63. Tributes to Bernie Moreau. Eric Gilliland, a cherished comedy writer whose work left a lasting impact on television, is fondly remembered for his wit, humor, and storytelling prowess. 